Part One. You'll hear a conversation between two students in the dining hall of the college. First, you have some time to read questions one to four. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to four. Hi, Max. How are you? Hi, Melanie. I'm fine. In fact, I'm preparing the coming holidays, and I want to have a car tour with my friends. That sounds lovely. How is your preparation? Well, I haven't begun yet because I'm not quite sure how to rent a car and what the expense is like, and something like this. Ha! <laughs> You've run into the right person. I did the same last holiday, and I can recommend it to you. I went to Avis Rent a Car Company, which is at fourteen A Dover Road, Oxford. Let me write it down. Is it D O V E R? Yes, and the telephone number is six three four zero nine six three. But if you book for the first time, dial another number with extension. That is six three four zero eight five three. Extension fifty four. Okay, thank you very much. I'll have a try. I want to book a car for tour. I want to inquire some information about the grade of the cars and the prices. No problem. We offer a wide selection of rental cars to choose from, from luxury car to economy car, compact car, minivan, and pickup truck. Well,、uh, luxury car is obviously out of my price range, but. Compact or economy is not big enough. You know, we have seven persons together. Well, how about a minivan? It's perfect for road trips and will make your journey feel like you're in a living room on wheels. I think that's good. Well, what does it feature? I, I mean, what facilities does it have? Unlike most minivans with manual transmission, the rental minivan cars have feature automatic transmission, air conditioning, and AM/FM stereo. If you drive a long, smooth way, you can use the cruise control, which will save you a lot of energy. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to read questions five to ten. Now listen to the conversation between Max and the assistant, and answer questions five to ten. Like most minivans with manual transmission, the rental minivan cars have feature automatic transmission, air conditioning, and AM/FM stereo. If you drive a long, smooth way, you can use the cruise control, which will save you a lot of energy. Good. How much is the price? If you rent an intermediate one, it will cost you fifty-five pounds each day. If it is standard, the cost is forty-five pounds per day. I think the standard is enough. Oh, we have a special fifty percent discount for weekends from Friday to Sunday, but that doesn't apply to tax, recovery fees, and optional services. Well, what are the optional services? Well, they usually include some extra facilities like first aid kit or something like that.、Uh, I know. We plan to start off on Friday, so we have to prepare one day in advance. I want to book from thirtieth of April, which is Thursday, and it will end next Monday. Okay. Could you leave your name and the driving license number? My name is Max, and the license number is M nine zero two one. Okay. You can pick up the car on Thursday noon. Besides, we offer some optional services like street maps, flashlight, and sunsheet. What would you like to have?、Mm, flashlight is not necessary, I think, but street maps are useful, especially when we drive in a strange place. As for the sunsheet, I'd like to give that a miss. We don't want to spend too much extra money. Okay, Mr. Max. Thank you for calling. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the director of a new art centre speaking to a group of local people who have come to hear what the new art centre will be offering. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Listen carefully to the first part of the talk, and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you all for turning out on this cold, wet evening. Welcome to our new art centre. I'm delighted that so many people are interested in finding out about the facilities and events that we'll be offering. I'll start with the regular evening events that we've scheduled so far. Sunday night will be film club night. Each week, we'll be showing a classic film from the 40s, 50s, or 60s. Films will start at quarter to seven, and afterwards there will be an opportunity to discuss the film in the cafe bar for anybody who'd like to. Tickets for the film will be five pounds, but the discussion afterwards is free. Although anybody who wants to buy me a drink is welcome to do so. <laughs> On Thursday evenings at seven thirty, the auditorium is given over to productions by touring theatre companies. This coming Thursday, we're very excited to be welcoming Pizzazz, a drama company featuring both able-bodied. And physically handicapped actors, they'll be performing a rather special version of William Shakespeare's *The Tempest*, featuring music and dance as well as dialogue. Fridays and Saturdays will be music nights, starting at 8 p.m. with classical or traditional music on the Fridays and pop rock on the Saturdays. However. As the sound system hasn't yet been fully installed, these events won't be starting for another few weeks. As well as evening performances, various events will take place during the day. So far, a mothers and toddlers session has been arranged for Monday afternoons, and of course, anybody can drop in for a coffee or a sandwich. The cafe bar will be open from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mondays to Fridays, and 11 a.m. to midnight Saturdays and Sundays. Lunch will be served from half past 12 till 2, and light snacks will be available all day. Of course, this program is just the start, and we expect to be announcing many additional events in the near future. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen, and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about becoming a member. Membership benefits include reduced price tickets, priority bookings, and a monthly newsletter, which will feature the latest details of forthcoming events, plus details of other arts events in the local area. The cost of membership is just fifteen pounds a year, which I think is very reasonable. To get a membership card, you'll need to provide us with a passport-sized photo plus payment, of course, by cash or check. We can't accept credit cards, I'm afraid, at least not for the moment. We hope to have credit card payment facilities available in the not too distant future. 
Then, when you want to buy reduced price tickets, you simply show your card at the box office or quote your membership number if you're making a telephone booking. Generally, a membership card will save around 20% on the full ticket price, so it really is very good value. Now we come to the most important part, your suggestions. It's your art centre, so we want to hear what you'd like to see. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You are going to hear part of a lecture on some useful information for your travelling around Britain. Listen to the lecture and complete the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Good afternoon and welcome to the session on Britain. This afternoon, I would like to provide some useful information for you about travelling around Britain. Britain has over 700 tourist information centres. You will find them at major ports, airports, stations, historic landmarks and towns, and holiday centres. So just look out for this sign that says Tourist Information. The staff will be able to answer your holiday queries, as well as provide essential maps, guides and brochures. Tourist Information Centres at major ports and airports in London and addresses of British Tourist Authority European offices are all listed on the Tourist Information Centres. Now, let's talk about the telephone in Britain. You know, Britain is well supplied with public telephones. Street kiosks take lop coins. In city centres, mainline railway stations, airports and central London underground stations, payphones and card phones are in operation. For the latter, small plastic phone cards are used and these come in 10, 20, 40, 100 and 200 units and can be bought at post offices, news kiosks, station bars and shops where the green and white card phone sign is displayed. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. When using the different public telephone systems, make sure you read the dialing instructions carefully. Now let's see the banks in Britain. There are 24-hour banks at London's two main airports. One is Heathrow and the other is Gatwick. Otherwise, banks are normally open from 9.30 to 3.30, Monday to Friday. Barclays Bank and National Westminster Bank offer a Saturday morning service at some of their branches. National Gyra Banks has 42 bureaux de change located in post offices throughout the country in main tourist areas. Opening hours are 9 to 5.30 weekdays, 9 to 12.30 Saturday mornings. 
One exception to this is the Trafalgar Square office, whose opening hours are 8 to 8 weekdays and Saturdays, and 10 to 5 on Sundays. The Bureau de Change services are available to overseas visitors. Visitors can change their money there. You can also change money at Bureau de Change, large hotels, department stores and travel agents. Be sure to check in advance the rate of exchange and the commission charged, as these vary considerably. Wherever possible, you are advised to use the bank or Bureau de Change, which conforms to the BTA Code of Conduct. In most cases, this is indicated by display of the code. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. We're going to hear a talk on wild rice. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. Good morning. Today we'd like to talk about wild rice. Contrary to what many people believe, wild rice is not rice at all, but a grass. Much of it sold in the world today is not even wild, but rather cultivated varieties that do not occur naturally. Wild rice is really an annual aquatic seed, found mostly in the upper freshwater lakes of Canada, Michigan, Wisconsin and Minnesota in North America. Indians gathered wild rice before any explorers set foot on the North American continent. Early explorers were greatly impressed with the strength and hardiness of the woodland Indians and attributed their vitality to their ample servings of wild rice. Wild rice can grow in water as shallow as three or four feet along marshes and muddy waters. A tall plant, it grows to a height of eight to ten feet, with a long flower cluster that reminds one of a narrow broom. The grains in their husks on the tall stalk looks somewhat like oats. Truly wild rice is a challenging crop to grow. Even today, it's very susceptible to failure due to weather conditions. If a heavy windstorm comes along just before harvesting, the seeds can be blown into the water, ruining an entire crop. Harvesting at just the right time becomes a matter of beating the birds to it since wild rice is considered a delicacy by many birds living in the area. Other challenges include insects, disease, poor drainage and high waters. If the grains are too green, they are difficult to thresh or beat out of their husks. If left on the plant too long, even a few days too long, they fall off the plant into the water. Airboats have brought about recent improvements in commercial harvesting of the wild rice, while newer techniques for parching, winnowing and hulling have been a help in saving time and labour. Still, it takes about three pounds of grass seed to yield one pound of wild rice. Buyers should be aware of two types of wild rice, gathered and commercial. Foraged or hand-harvested wild rice is gradually being pushed out of the market by hybrid commercial varieties. Hand-harvested wild rice 
makes up less than 20% of the market today. Heirloom varieties of this foraged grain still exist. In fact, it is the only heirloom grain sold commercially. However, package labels can be deceiving. Though the label may read Indian harvested or organic, the product may be hybridised wild rice placed in freshwater lakes and gathered by Indians in airboats. Hand harvested, organic and from the Great Lakes region is the real thing with superior flavour and aroma, but it may be difficult to find. Though wild rice is one of the most expensive grains, it goes a long way. Some say that one pound of the grain can feed 30 people. To compensate for its high cost, try combining wild rice half and half with brown rice. For a truly colourful presentation, try one third of each white rice, brown rice, and wild rice. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. When there's no more hope is left in me, I can see what comes my way, and I'm always lost. There's nowhere else to go.